You want to build your own diversified portfolio, but you're just not sure where to begin. What does it mean to be diversified? How do you select different asset classes for your own diversified portfolio? That's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you the foundation for selecting different asset classes to build your own diversified portfolio. I've been managing money for over 25 years. I've met with over 300 wealthy families along the way. That experience and that empirical data set is what I draw upon for the information I'm about to share with you. It is very common for me to meet with wealthy families who think they have a diversified portfolio when in reality they don't. What they have is a bunch of investments that are highly correlated. At most, they have stocks and bonds. And when the next crash comes, they'll probably lose a lot more money than they expected and not receive the diversification benefit that they were really hoping to achieve. The degree to which two investments move together or against each other is what we care about most when building a diversified portfolio. To achieve diversification, you can't have all of your investments moving together in lockstep. You need to have some zig while others zag. And the measurement that we care about when comparing investments and asset classes is called the correlation coefficient. That tells us the degree to which two investments move together or against each other. The correlation coefficient ranges from one to minus one. A correlation coefficient of one would indicate that two investments are perfectly positively correlated. They're both moving up or down at the same time. Perfect positive correlation. A correlation coefficient of minus one would tell us that two investments are perfectly negatively correlated, which means that while one is going up, the other is going down and vice versa. Ideally, when building your diversified portfolio, you want to see some investments in the portfolio that have a hopefully very low, zero, or even negative correlation coefficient between each other. Simply put, the less correlation between the investments in your portfolio, the higher the diversification benefit. You don't want all your investments moving together. It's a big mistake if you have lots of investments, for example, but they're all perfectly positively correlated. Then they're all going to go down together and up together. Not much of a diversification benefit. To help you see how different asset classes are correlated, I have put together a table for a number of common asset classes. Emerging markets, emerging markets bonds, real estate, treasuries, stocks, growth stocks, etc. We're going to take a look at this and I think it's going to be a real eye opener for you. It will really help you to think critically about how you're diversifying your own portfolio after you review the data that I'm about to show you. This table shows us the 10 year correlations between a number of common asset classes. We're looking at real estate. We're looking at tips. We're looking at short treasury bonds and commodities and mortgage-backed securities and emerging markets and small caps and the S&P 500, gold, et cetera, et cetera. I've created a list of 15 different asset classes using investments like the Fidelity Floating Rate High Income Fund, which is a loan fund, or the Invesco QQQ Trust, which is the NASDAQ 100, JNK, high yield bonds, GLD gold, et cetera, et cetera. I picked these different asset classes using ETFs and then built this correlation matrix to show you the degree to which these asset classes, all of which are very common, are correlated. Here's how you interpret the chart. We take the number on the left-hand side and come out and find the intersection with the number on the staircase. In this case, if we're looking at Number six, that would be the iShares 20 plus year treasury bond, TLT. And we come down and we go over to number eight, and that is the iShares S&P small cap, IJR. So the intersection of six and eight 
shows us that there is almost no correlation. It's 0 0.01. That is good diversification. Or in the case of 6 and 12, 12 is the commodities index, ETF, GSG, 6 and 12 are negatively correlated right here at 0.39. But then we can look at an investment like 2 and 5, which is the QQQs and the S&P 500, and you can see a very high correlation at 0.92. So when using a data table like this, it can help you determine what investments work well together and what investments are very highly correlated to one another. When building a diversified portfolio, what we're looking for are low correlations, which are the gray boxes, or negative correlations, which are the orange boxes. The dark navy boxes where we see 0 0.89, 0 0.75, 0 0.94 right here, that is a low diversification benefit. We're gonna get the most diversification from the zero to slightly negative correlation coefficients. So this is a chart that you can press pause on and study, and it's gonna be an eye-opener. The more you study this, the more you're gonna think about the asset classes in your portfolio, the investments you're using, or changes that you might make to your portfolio. Because if you find that you have a lot of investments in your portfolio, but they're all at, say, 0.9 or 0.8 type correlation, you don't have much diversification going on. What you have are a lot of investments that are all going to move together up and down, and hence, no diversification. The majority of investors consider diversification to be a pie chart like we're looking at right here. They put some money in stocks, they get some money in bonds and cash, and they think that they're diversified. But as we just saw from that correlation data table, you may not be nearly as diversified as you think if a lot of the investments in your pie are highly correlated. At a minimum, when developing the pie chart for your portfolio, you want to make sure that you're using an expanded asset allocation showing the subcategories within stocks, within bonds. This will help you to see the different styles of investment within your portfolio and help you isolate what investments are going to give you more diversification benefit based on their correlation coefficient to the other investments in your portfolio. Unfortunately, within equities, correlation coefficients tend to be quite high and we don't get much diversification benefit. I've listed a number of different strategies here to demonstrate how closely related they are to one another in terms of price movements. The NASDAQ 100, S&P 500, emerging markets, small caps, real estate, mid caps, Dow Jones. And for all of you who are so enamored with covered call funds, I've included QILD, a fund that I'm not a big fan of, but I thought it would be interesting to see how does it relate to other equity strategies? The only benefit that we really see here is with emerging markets. If you look at number three, which is the emerging markets ETF, and you compare it to the other investments, you see that it has a little bit lower correlation coefficient, but by and large, all of these equity strategies are fairly highly correlated. And in a downturn, a serious crash in the market, they're all going to move together most likely. You probably won't get much diversification benefit if we have a crash. Bonds are different. When looking at the 10-year correlation matrix, we start to see negative numbers and neutral numbers. I've listed a number of bond strategies here, and we can see right away that we get more diversification benefit within bonds than we do within equities. We're looking at short-term treasuries, TIPS, mortgage-backed securities, emerging markets bonds, aggregate bond index, 20-year treasury bond, high-yield bonds, and loans. This is what a highly diversified portfolio looks like. We have commodities, S&P 500, bond market, short-term treasuries, gold, and real estate. 
you don't see a lot of high correlation coefficients, only one, and that's between two and six, which is the S&P 500 and real estate. Most people don't know that, but the stock market is highly correlated to real estate. All of the other correlation coefficients in this matrix are fairly low to neutral or even negative. Now there is a lot more to building a diversified portfolio than just selecting investments based on correlation coefficients. You wanna do a lot more research and have a good feel for what the return opportunity is for the investments and asset classes you're selecting. However, making sure that the investments and asset classes you select have low correlation is a very good starting point. Most investors just assume that by spreading their money around across a number of asset classes or investments that they are getting a good diversification benefit. But unless you apply correlation coefficient analysis, you may be disappointed, especially in the next major stock market crash. If you have questions about your investments, please give my office a call. We would be happy to give you a second opinion on your portfolio. The last thing that I'll add is that correlation coefficients can change over time and the time period under study, whether you're looking at 10 years, three years, five years, one year, will also influence the degree to which two different investments are related in terms of price. You wanna be aware of that. You wanna be able to follow different investments over time Look for long-term reliable patterns between asset classes, but know that correlation coefficients are a moving target. So you want to be frequently monitoring your portfolio and checking in on what's happening between the different investments in your portfolio. If you like this content, please share it with your friends. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it gets you thinking helps you better analyze your investments, and overall improve your family's financial plan.